on, we have no people on, but we are back again for part two, and we are going to be talking about the myth that is diabetes type 2, how we get it, how we get rid of it, and managing blood sugars, and what the old information is, and what the new information is. Do you know what, I have to say, when that someone asked you that question, I haven't got anyone watching at the moment, Somebody asked you that question, some Venus legs or something like that. And I'm just thinking, I have, hi Robin, Robin's back. I was just thinking, I haven't heard anybody ask you a question that you didn't just have an inkling, know exactly what it was, able to just shoot from the hip and, 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 and talk, talk about it, which I find absolutely incredible because my doctor will have to look up, uh, he'll, he'll get a book out and he'll start looking up a particular thing. And you just seem to know Seriously. everything. Just like, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, all about the leg. It's just like there isn't a thing that anyone's got, even some really unusual thing that you just don't know the answer off the top of your head. It's really quite incredible. So I just wanted to say I'm... Um, I'm completely well, you're, loud. Uh, you're a sweetheart for saying that. Um, I don't know everything. Um, yeah, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> let me get that out right now. Um, those. <laughs> but there's nothing that you. Sometimes you need more information. But you'll go. Oh, I'm guessing it might be that. I need more information. Then they come. Oh, yes, yes, it is that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that. Oh, here's. Well, a, it's just like incredible. I'd what? I'd say it's probably a matter of confidence because. The doctors, if they tell you something that's wrong, they're going to get in a lot of trouble for it because right, my son's my son's saying something. Is just giving their thoughts, and they're not necessarily right now doing a live stream. Right, they're not in a position where they are doctors that must be right and they right. Are wrong, not in a professional situation. They're just. Can you hear this? I'm I'm hearing. There's not I'm liking what I hear. Sort of, I have to be right here. It's a suggestion. Right. And so it's not restricted by needing to make sure you are absolutely correct on this. You can be more then, confident. Then you're more confident in saying what you think. Okay. There you go. That's my son's the pro prognosis on... You might need to repeat that. I'm never be able to repeat that, but that Dr. Gilmore could hear it, so I think they can all all, all hear so yes, he was saying it's a it's a confidence thing. It's because you're confident, and um, your head's not on the line for getting it wrong. <laughs> and he says your head's not on the line for getting it wrong. But it's just like you know, yes, with advice, but you have to know what X Y Z disease is. And he goes, oh yes, that's caused because of this, that, and that, and this is an efficiency with that. And I'm guessing you're probably this, and you're probably and how's your weight? And what do you? Yeah, I expect your figures. Of, and I'm just like. <sighs> Blown okay. Away well, by so anyway, let's that's... back up a bit. Let, let's let's um. Sorry, sorry. You you're blushing. You're blushing, darling. The... Right, Mary you... Beth, sweetheart. Hello, darling. Hi, Debs. Carol. Hello, Carol. Vanessa. V's back. Paul's <laughs> back here. Valerie is back because we're going to talk. I'm going to sit back and listen. Wish I could afford all the docs, vitamins, and meds. Right, Valerie, you are in for a treat, girl. Over okay. to you on the whole diabetes so, myth. So I want to be sure I understand the situation. You have a, you have a viewer who is a type two diabetic. Yeah. And I believe that they're not on insulin. Is that correct? Are you not on insulin, Valerie? She's doing the keto on and off the keto diet. Right. Right. And so when she goes on the keto diet, she notices she has better glucose control. Because she's following the old adage, she's following what's being taught out there, that if you cut your carbohydrates down, your glucose readings will get better. And that is true on the short term. It's not true in the long term. Okay, So we're very narrow-minded. We're very uh, nearsighted about how we're treating diabetes. And this is why diabetes progresses, is because we keep telling people, to not eat carbohydrates. She's Your on body insulin. has to have carbohydrates. She's what? She is on insulin. Okay. So her insulin resistance problem is what's caused type 2 diabetes. The fact that she's on insulin tells me she's had diabetes probably for somewhere around 20 years, whether it was diagnosed 
early or not, she's probably at least 20 years into her diabetes. And as a result, she's now come to the point where even with the sensitization medications that we use, her body is not able to keep glucose levels at a reasonable area unless she gets additional insulin. So what she's doing by adding insulin is she's pouring fuel onto the fire. And she's doing it because her doctors are saying the most important thing for you to do is to keep your sugars down where they're supposed to be. And by doing that, doctors are ignoring a significant problem, and that is insulin toxicity. We don't look at the problem that getting too much insulin causes. Insulin toxicity is a real problem because it leads to medical issues in and of itself. But that's aside. Now... <clears throat> When you go on a no-carbohydrate diet, you're not adding any glucose to your body. So when that happens, the, in, the glucose that you have in your body is dropping down low, okay? So by doing the keto diet and by having a high-protein animal-based diet, you are not adding the sugars so you don't see the diabetes anymore, okay? It's still there. It's just not showing up as high sugar. It's there. And the more animal products you eat, the more resistant you're going to be to your, to your insulin when you do eat a carbohydrate. So what's happening is, is you're worsening your diabetes in the long term, but over the short term, you're going to get a better A1C. So if you eat no carbohydrates at all, you're going to make yourself sick, sick, sicker, but your glucose levels will look good. And doctors are going to go, yay, you did great. Your A1C is now 6.4 or 7.2. You're doing great. But the fact of the matter is, is you can't sustain this. You have to go back and eat carbohydrates, which is what you're doing. You're going on and off and on and off, and when you go back off, your sugars are spiking and you're having trouble keeping yourself under control until you do what? Until you cut those glucose, until you cut those carbohydrates out. So what we're saying is your problem isn't the carbohydrates, but you think it is. Your doctor thinks it is. Medical science thinks it is. But the research, the real research that's being buried says that's not the problem. That's the symptom. The real problem is the resistance that your body has built up to insulin. So ask yourself, why is my body not responding to insulin? And why do I have to even give myself injections of more insulin to handle glucose and carbohydrates? The answer is, is the animal products are making you so resistant to insulin that you have to give yourself more. And when you cut out the sugars completely, and when I say sugars, that's carbohydrates, when you cut out the carbohydrates, then you're not able to see the damage anymore. But the damage is continuing. If you want to reverse the damage, the first thing you have to do is you have to get rid of the animal products, you have to get rid of the starches, and you have to go whole food, plant-based, you have to focus on nuts, vegetables, and low glycemic index fruits, all right? So that means you eat things like apples and almonds and cashews and tomatoes and all the things that Sue can tell you about that will make you ha healthy. And what will begin to happen is, is your glucose readings, although initially will be up, they'll start to naturally come down. And it may take you a few weeks. It may take six weeks. It may take three months. But your body will become sensitive again to your own naturally circulating insulin to the point where you will no longer have to add the injections. After that, you'll start being able to come off of your medications and you may be able to eliminate your sensitizing agents completely. Some people, because of the fact that their diabetes is so advanced that they've turned from a type 2 diabetic closer to a type 1 diabetic, I call it the great convergence, where what happens is, is you've so abused your pancreas' ability to produce insulin 
that it's no longer able to make enough insulin to do what it was normally originally designed and programmed to do. And so some people will still need some medicines. So you become closer to a type 1, so you're more like a type 1.5 than you are a 2. And so as a result, you, you, you actually become dependent on this insulin. So the first thing that will happen is we can, if we can get rid of the insulin, then you have a possibility of coming off of your other medications. But don't be surprised, even if you go whole food plant-based, you stick with it and you stay off the starches, that you still have to be on a medicine, a pill, to keep your glucose where it needs to be. And that's because of the long-term damage. If I can get somebody who's not on insulin yet, almost always, nothing's 100% in the world, but almost always we can get them cured of their type 2 diabetes if we can get them to go whole food plant-based because we return the cellular ability at our at the very basic level of your body to be sensitive to handle glucose correctly because it responds to the signal of the insulin. What's happening right now is you're, you're eating something and your body says, oh, that sugar, here comes the insulin. I don't care. I'm going to do what I want to do because it's not hearing the insulin anymore. The insulin has to yell louder to be heard, and it can't yell loud enough by itself. So we're recruiting more insulin to come in and yell even louder and say, that's glucose. Take it up. Put it in your cell. You need it. You have to have glucose to live, right? So we got to get rid of all this these cheerleader insulins and let your body just work off its own natural insulin. And to get there, you've got to stop blocking that signal. And you're blocking that signal with animal proteins. If you'll cut the animal proteins out of your diet, you will begin to be able to handle carbohydrates normally again. And you won't spike super high and have these high levels anymore. But what you're doing now by going back and forth onto this keto thing is you're fooling yourself into believing that the keto is healthy and it's actually working. And it looks like it's working because temporarily, because you're not putting any sugar into your body at all, your sugar levels come down. So what you have to do is you have to make the conversion and it's going to be a slow conversion, but you can do it. If you would immediately, if I could get you and put you in a room and let me just feed you what you're supposed to eat, within six to eight weeks, I would almost be able to guarantee you I could get you off of your insulin and down to maybe one or no diabetes medicines. We can make that diabetes go away. It takes time, but it works. And if you talk to Sue, and Sue will tell you about all these people that she's encountered that had type 2 diabetes, and they couldn't figure out what was going on, and when they went off the animal products and went on the things the doctor's telling you not to eat, which is all carbohydrates, all whole food, plant-based, their diabetes went away, and yours can too. Look, you're either going to have to do one of two things. You're either going to have to continue doing what you're doing and watching your diabetes continue to worsen, which it will do. If you keep doing what you're doing, your diabetes is going to worsen and you will continue to need more and more and more medications to the point where your doctors are going to say, it's ridiculous that we have you on all these pills. You need insulin anyway. Why don't we just increase the insulin and we can save you some money? And that's where you're headed because that's what's going to happen. Pretty soon you're going to be basically a type 1 diabetic. So you're either going to have to change that the pattern, this so-called natural progression, medicine's been trained to teach doctors that diabetes is gradually going to worsen no matter what you do, so get them on insulin earlier. That's what they're telling us now when the reps come in. They're telling us to get us get, up, get our patients on insulin earlier. And I'm looking at them and I'm going to say, why would I pour gasoline on the fire? And they say, yeah, we know, but it's our job. And that's what they're saying to me when they come into the office and they bring us a $500 meal to feed 25 people to tell us about their insulin and why they're pushing it for type 2 diabetes because it's a huge market growth area for them. It's all about the money, 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 money. They want you on their insulins. Insulin's expensive and they're making tons of money on it and they want more people on it. So you can either decide to keep doing what you're doing and watch your diabetes continue to worsen like it has probably over 20 years. And again, you didn't tell me how long you've had it. I know how long you've had it. 
or you can make a significant change in your diet in and by your diet I mean in your lifestyle and you can begin cutting the animal products out going whole food plant based good carbohydrates healthy carbohydrates and you can watch your glucose levels start coming down and you taking control not just of your diabetes but curing your diabetes and taking control of your life. Now, if that's the answer you were looking for, you got it. And if you go to conventional science today, you go to conventional doctors today, they're going to tell you I'm wrong, and they're wrong. And I have the research to back it up. Yay. There you have it. That's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. And there's lovely Chrissy is saying that she was almost type 2 and changing to plant-based and, you know, all the things that we've been doing here together for the last probably almost two months now, isn't it, um, you know, has has changed that. Uh, Valerie is saying um, if you have a spare room, she'd, she'd be there in a shot. Um, and, yeah, she's in the U.S., so she wishes insurance would pay for, for, for your meds, for her meds. If you didn't need any meds at all, that would just be great, and that would pay for all the fruit and veg in Spain. So here's another Loads of. So so here's the, on the same line, Lori, and I'm going to come back up. I missed some comments. Debs, I see your comment. I'm going to, I'm going to get to it. Uh, Lori says vitamin D3, DHA, taurine, omega-3 fatty acids, and heme iron, meat-based versus non-heme iron, plant-based, which isn't absorbed the same uh, way called the meat factor. So, so there's this myth out there that to be healthy, you must eat an animal. Okay, are the animals not healthy? I want you to ask yourselves this question. Are the animals that you're eating, are they not healthy? Because they're not eating meat. And they have plenty of protein. Gorillas only eat what? What do they eat, Sue? Plants. Do they not have big muscles? And lots of power and strength. Are they all sick? No. Nope. Because our body chemistries and structure is not a lot different from the great apes. Yeah. It's not. <gasps> no, it's very, very similar. We're very, That's very right. similar to, to um, fruit-eating um, apes is what we're closest to with our dental structure. But, yes, we also have the ability... Um, to digest meat, not very well, but we do have the ability to do it. Um, right. But all these great, the great gorilla is plant-based, you know. I've had patients come in that are vegan, that that I've run blood work on, and guess what? They're not anemic. They don't have low vitamin levels. Yeah. The only issue that a whole food plant-based diet offers uh, is B12 levels, and you have to get your, you have to supplement your B12, and that's not because there's something wrong with the way we're eating. It's something wrong with the food we're getting because most of it's grown in soils that are sterilized to help prevent weeds and pests, and they kill the bacteria in the soil that produces the B12. Yeah. So our ancestors got plenty of B12. We don't. Yeah. So we have to supplement ours. And also the whole thing about eating, you know, you get B12 from eating red meat or from eating meat. That would be true if the animals had contact with the soil. But they're not. Right. They're kept in barns on concrete. So that they're, those animals that, you know, this factory produced stuff, which is what most of people are eating, that yeah. cow's never had its mouth on a piece of grass. It's never been in contact with the soil ever. It's been pellet fed, you know. And, it's and been Deb's mechanically asked, uh, fed, says, you know. So it's when we're not getting the B12 from the animals unless we're eating expensive grass fed or, or wild or, you know, special blah, blah, blah meat, you know. So that's also a bit of a fallacy, isn't it? Industrial farming requires lots and lots of animals in close quarters, feed lots, chicken coops, pig raising areas. I don't know what you call them. They're so disgusting. 
These animals, they are given a steady diet of hundreds sometimes of antibiotics. And the reason this is done is if that isn't done, the animals get sick and die. All right? So animals that that are raised in open fields, not in crowded conditions, they don't require the antibiotics that are given to the animals that we're eating in general. That's why if you eat, you know, pure like organic grass-fed beef, um, it costs so much more because it requires a lot more land, space, yeah. and and to to raise these animals. Which, if you're gonna eat meat, my goodness, that's the one you should eat yeah. because it's it is a lot healthier, right? Yeah. Okay. So. It, the fact that people need meat to be healthy, the, pa- the fact that it is said is a is a bold faced lie, and it's an unintentional lie on most part because people aren't saying it because they intend to deceive you. It's what they've been told. Yeah, they believe it, and so they're trying to make you healthy. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, back in the I think in the twenties or the thirties. The government advertised that cigarettes were healthy for you. They helped you relax and calmed you down after a busy day of work. You know, it was actually, you know, research has changed. And, you know, the research now all points towards plant-based rather than eating, eating a, a, you know, animal products in every bite of every bit of food you eat, which is kind of what a lot of what, what we've been used to doing, you know. Uh, Debs asked a question and she's talking about, um, Valerie. And so I'm getting, so I'm not sure I'm going to answer the right question, but I'm going to try. Okay. She says here, uh, that she's on ADD medication, ADD, attention deficit disorder medication, a stimulant. And I am doing better on the plant based diet when I take the Ritalin. Could you explain how it will help with her concentration with the plant based diet? Well, Debs, before I answer that question, I have to ask you, are you still taking Meta 7? Because you also started taking some Meta 7. I don't know if you're out or if you're still taking or what, but pay, people that take Meta 7 have more focus and concentration too. That aside, I'm going to presume uh, that this does not include the Meta 7. So let's go into whole food, plant-based eating. When you eat animal products... You are introducing into your body foreign proteins, proteins that your body is not. Okay, so Debs, you are still taking it. So your change in concentration and focus uh, could be attributed to the Meta 7 as well. And I have a lot of patients that used to be on stimulants for ADD symptoms that they take the Meta 7 and they don't need their stimulants anymore, um, especially if they've changed their their uh, their way they eat, okay? So um, if you continue, though, to eat animal products and you load your body up with foreign proteins, your body's immune system is extremely complex, but it's also easily confused when it comes to animal proteins because the proteins that you're eating in many time, in many cases, are shared in your own body. So your body's immune system begins to be confused and mounts an immune response against certain proteins that we also have. Guess where? In your brain. So what do you think? If you didn't know this, but multiple sclerosis (MS) is an autoimmune disease. Okay, it's an autoimmune problem that we believe in many cases is caused by exposure to a foreign protein. Where do you think that foreign protein came from? An animal. So if you eat whole food plant-based, your body is less likely to be confused about that protein because that protein is not something similar to what's already in your body. You're eating something that your body can deal with. It's not going to cause an immune problem and you're going to be healthier, your mind's going to work better, you're going to be sharper, you're going to be able to multitask better, you're going to be able to stay on focus better, you will be healthier and you'll feel healthier, your sense of well-being will improve, your vitamin D levels will go up, especially if you do the 10% mushrooms like I talk about. I know we had our lady that came on, and I don't know where she got her her 80-10-10. When I say 80-10-10, I mean 80% fruits and vegetables, 10% mushrooms, and then 10% uh, you can use, you know, oils and fats and things like that. But 
you 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 or or, or you're really I what what I look at is is an eighty ten ten where it's eighty percent like we talked about ten percent mushrooms and then ten percent you can have as starches. Um, and if you eat whole foods, you're going to get nuts and seeds and things like that, and you're going to get plenty of the essential oils. Um, and if you're worried about not getting enough omega-3, then your problem is you don't understand why you need more omega-3. You need more omega-3 to, to counterbalance the omega-6s. The problem is you're getting omega-6s in your meats and animal products. They're loaded with a highly inflammatory fatty acid called omega-6. And we look at a ratio between omega-3 and omega-6, and we want that ratio to be high in the favor of omega-3 because omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory fatty acid and very, very important to get. But if you're not eating meat, you don't need as much of it. It's not – it's again, it's the ratio. So if you cut that denominator way down, then your numerator doesn't have to be quite as large, right? And you can have a high ratio. So you get plenty of omega-3s in your diet if you're whole food plant-based. You don't have to worry about those omega-6s. I hope that helps. Wow, that's so interesting. It is, isn't it? Because that's the thing, that's the question, you know. The first question is, where do you get your protein from? And then there's the whole B12 deficiency that people talk about. No, you can only get that from animals. So it, that's very interesting that the actual, the, the whole ratio changes when you go plant based because right. it, it's all the good things that are happening that don't, that, 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 that we don't have to counteract all the inflammation from, from, from meat based products. And of course, if you're plant based whole food, there's a lot less processed sugars and you sure. know, ingredients that we can't spell, we can't buy, we don't have in our cupboard that are in, in a lot of these processed foods because you can be an incredibly unhealthy vegan. You know, there's a lot of ready-made products and stuff like right. that, you know, like, right. you know, vegan shepherd's pie or vegan this, that and the other. And, and it's just like buying a TV dinner that's meat-based. It's, it's got a lot of processed sugars. It's got a lot of nonsense a lot of, you know, E numbers and, you know, ingredients that they just give a number to. Right. You know, so there's, That's true. And, and, and you could literally be unhealthy and still be vegan if you're eating lots of processed sugars, um, you know, oils and all that, that sort of thing, saturated oils and, and stuff like that. So, um, so I have a challenge. I have a challenge for Chrissy. This is a challenge for you because you left me a message and you said, Dr. G, I'm taking 50,000 units of vitamin D. I believe you're taking vitamin D2 and you're taking 50,000 units once a week. And you just got your blood work done and your doctor said your vitamin D level was next to nothing. Why is this? Okay, well, 50,000 units of D2 is not enough for most people. It's not the D3 that we look at. D3 is the active form that we're looking at, okay? So your body may not be absorbing the uh, the pellet, the big pill you're taking once a week. But here's my challenge. My challenge to you is is add mushrooms to something you eat every day until you go get your blood work done next time. Add some mushrooms into at least one meal a day every day and then get your blood work done. And your doctor will think that finally... His, his or her prescription is working because your vitamin D level will do like my vitamin wow. D level was. I was on three forms of vitamin D while I was eating animals. I was on the vitamin D in my Meta 7. I was in the vitamin D in my multivitamin, and I was in I was taking vitamin D, 5,000 units a day. Wow. Those three sources. I never got my vitamin D level over 26. That was the highest it ever got. I quit eating animal products. I went whole food plant based. I made sure I got 10% of my diet from mushrooms. I checked my labs. I believe it was six to eight weeks after. My vitamin D level was over 50. Then I did it again a couple of months later. And my vitamin D level was over 80. And then I stopped taking the vitamin D because I didn't want to get hypervitaminosis. I didn't want to get too much. That's when I stopped taking vitamin D. I still take the multivitamin, and of course I take my, my Meta 7. I'm going to take my Meta 7, right? So I take those. But my vitamin D level skyrocketed when I went whole food plant-based. Wow. Okay? 
So <laughs> my challenge to you is to add mushrooms to one meal a day. And thank you. She says challenge accepted. I like Excellent. that. Excellent. I was going to ask you, Chrissy, because she's on my channel as well. <laughs> Are you going to take her up? Right. That be so. So we're gonna we're gonna ask you at the end of January. Then is it the end of January? When we, we need to know when she's going to check get her labs again. Yeah, you must let us know because we'll all be really interested to to see that. That will be yeah. that will be the proof in the pudding there. Proof is in the pudding. pudding. <laughs> and you this... can't have your pudding if you don't eat your meat. Isn't that how that song goes? <laughs> <laughs> Throw the meat so away and eat the pudding. <laughs> The proof, is, proof is in the in the in the pile of fruit you have rather than the pudding. That's right. The Excellent. Proof. That's that's really interesting. Actually, I'm going to start <laughs> adding more mushrooms to my diet. Um, oh, and here's the tip: you buy when you buy mushrooms. Usually, now every place is different, but here we have these little containers where they put the mushrooms in. Usually, it's got a little plastic wrapper over it, and you'll have the thin sliced mushrooms will be three dollars and fifty cents. And then the same size container will will have half sliced mushrooms, and it'll be two dollars and fifty cents. And then you'll have the next one will be whole mushrooms, the same amount of mushrooms uncut, for a dollar seventy nine or something. Right. And so all you're paying for is them to cut the mushrooms up for you. Get the unsliced mushrooms; they're fun to slice. Slice them up and throw them in your in your either eat them raw or throw them in whatever you're cooking. They're wonderful. Allergic to mushrooms, I'm, I'm at a loss. You're gonna, if you're allergic to mushrooms, you're going to have to supplement your vitamin D. Most likely, you will probably need to supplement your vitamin D, especially oh. if you're in a place where you don't get sunshine. Now, people here in Houston have a, it, it's endemic here. We have low vitamin D. We're in the sun belt. We're supposed to be getting high sunshine levels and all of that, but we don't. They don't tell people routinely here to, to supplement with vitamin D because we're in the sunshine belt and it's not supposed to be necessary. But the deal is this. We're the most air-conditioned city in the world, in Houston, Texas. We don't go outside here in the summertime because it's miserably humid and hot and nobody wants to be outside. And in the wintertime, it doesn't matter because we don't get enough sunshine then. We don't get it here. So we have to supplement or we have to go with... Um, Vitamin D, uh, or we have to go with uh, um, whole food plant-based mushrooms too. So 10% of your diet, I recommend you have mushrooms because having high vitamin D levels, and the by the way, we want your vitamin D level to be over, in science, we want it to be over 30 to be normal. Most researchers do not consider a vitamin D level of 30 to be normal. Most of them are saying definitely we should move that that, that benchmark up to 40, and some are saying 50, and I will tell you, if you get your vitamin D level up over 50, you will feel better. You will feel more energetic. You will feel more creative. Your mind will work better. Your sense of well-being will improve. You will notice the difference if you get your vitamin D level up. It's extremely important. The research, what we understand about how important vitamin D is in all, in all these different areas of life and health, we have yet to really scratch the surface of how important vitamin D is. And we're not just talking about bones anymore here, folks. We're talking about psychiatric issues. We're talking about, yes, your skin and your and your teeth and, and your bone strength. And your eyesight. And, and, and heart and, and, and how important it is in digestion and in so many different areas. Uh, prostate health. Um, reproductive system in general. Vitamin D is extremely important and we're, we're, we are depriving ourselves of it because we're eating this ridiculous diet of all these animals and it doesn't have the vitamin D in it that you need because we want to be sure we get enough protein. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and just to quote you from before, You've never, ever, 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 ever in your long-legged life had somebody in your surgery who is deficient in protein. Is that correct? I've never had a protein-deficient patient in my career. <laughs> never. <Your> career. <laughs> it's never happened. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get more protein, they keep saying to us. Yeah. Meat. It's, in it's what's for dinner. you got to have it. It's in broccoli. It's a, it's a lie. It's a lie. I got to have iron. Guess My, where the iron is, folks. Yeah. 
It's in your plants. Plants. <laughs> My son has just said, say that again louder. Proteins are pretty much the building blocks of everything biological. As in, literally, with the exception of, like, the cell walls that build up the structure of plants, pretty much everything is built out of proteins. That includes enzymes, and it includes... Um, Can you hear this? I am. All kinds of... Pretty much every structure within your cells is made of proteins. Give that boy a microphone. Proteins for pretty much everything, but based on the conversation I've came from you guys, you get that. Yeah. From the fruit diet. Yeah. You would because those would be in fruits too, because all plants have that too. All plants. All so. Bacteria will also have that. Yeah. Brilliant. You are it's wonderful. It's so important to life that if you didn't have the building blocks of proteins, life is impossible. There you go. You cannot reproduce something. There is, like, that's what DNA encodes, proteins. That's what DNA encodes, proteins. Protein all around us from a, a living structure. There's my whole check, making sure I get vitamins. Right, I'm just looking at any... Thanks, Finian, for that. Thanks for adding that. In the window with the sun coming... Th Will sitting in the window with sun coming through give you vitamin D? I would say no. Hi, Ada. You have to be actually out in it, don't you? Because glass actually... Is that right, Jack? I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I was reading something. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, Ada is saying, will sitting in the window with the sun coming through give you vitamin D? It'll think... help your body convert pre-vitamin D to an active vitamin D form. Yes, it is helpful. Through glass? Yes. Oh, right. Because you can't get sunburnt yes. through glass. So that it's the different rays then that get stopped by uh, glass. It, it, the, U, the, UV, the, the, the light that, that you can get the light, the sunlight right through the window. That's fine. Okay. That, that's absolutely fine. Cool. That's and good. people and people of color need more vitamin D because they have a more difficult time getting the um, the effect of sunlight. So people of color need even more vitamin D than than uh, than Caucasian people. Wow, I didn't know that. That's a truth. The melanin that gives the pigment of the skin, which blocks ultraviolet. Yes. That would be to do, Finian is saying he's assuming that would be to do with the menylin content in the skin blocking the effects of the sunlight. Yes, that's correct. Light, and I'm assuming yeah. that has an effect on vitamin D. Yeah, that would have an effect on vitamin D. Uh, I guess it means no broccoli and cheese. Broccoli and cheese. You can have vegan cheese on your broccoli, Valerie, just to let you know. Debs is saying very good, Finian. The lovely Debs. You absorb vitamin Let, D best through the back Here's what of your else neck. you can do with your broccoli and cheese. What's that? Leave the cheese off and just eat the broccoli. Yep, you can do that, but you know, if you. If That's you, my smart aleck response of the day. <laughs> you're not a fan of the vegan cheeses, are you? There's at all? a little smart aleck that lives in here and he runs around sometimes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I had the most delicious supper uh, with vegetables. I had a load of kale and fine green beans, and I had some tomatoes, and what else was in there? Some tofu and a red onion. And That's I just, the one thing I'm going to like about switching to Wednesdays and Sundays is I can, I can talk to you about what I've eaten that day because <laughs> all I've had today is black coffee and water. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it's I'm okay. So I, I'm looking forward so to being mean. able to tell you guys. What I ate. <laughs> but I had, I, I literally, I lightly steamed the green veg and then I stir fried it in just for a couple of minutes. Um, and I used avocado oil and then I just grated some vegan cheddar cheese, cheddar style cheese over the top of it and just let it slightly smell. It was just delicious. I've garlic in it as well. Garlic in it as well. Uh, it was heavenly. It was absolutely heavenly. I ate a giant plate full of it and then another giant plate of it because, of course, kale takes up loads of space, doesn't it? Um, and, and it was just delicious. I was just like, I was in heaven. I was in food heaven. Um, right. Valerie, um, yeah, Valerie's not a raw food anything. 
Beverly is saying you absorb vitamin D best through the uh, back of your neck from the sunshine. That's interesting. Didn't know that. Probably because of the lack of protection from sunlight on the back of the neck. Lack of protection. Well, What's Finian's got a hypothesis for that? Can you speak up a bit? So, I guess your hair will be covering the back of your neck, so your back of your neck won't have much protection against the sun, and so any effects of the sun will be stronger. Is that correct, do you think? Okay, I didn't hear all of it, so you'll have to re he said, reset. He said he's assuming that the, the, the you get the most absorption of vitamin D through the back of the neck, because most people's hair would cover that bit, so that... It's not got as much kind of built-in protection from the sun. Also areas that are normally covered by clothes, but there would be less to indicate that because they're normally covered with clothes. Right. Whereas the back won't I don't know about that because uh, we weren't designed to have clothes. We were kind of like, exactly, you know, naked humans, but we would have had hair the there. The point is, because of the hair... Protecting it from the sunlight and the Take the microphone away from him now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank um, you, darling. So, so Deb's br Deb's brought up a, an interesting point, and, and I know you like the uh, the uh, vegan cheeses, and 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 I've not really been become a fan of that. And um, uh, Deb's talked about uh, vegan toasted cheese sandwiches, and they were delicious, and. I, I have to admit, I have not really tried melting the cheese. I've usually, I, I've always tried it just, you know, a slice off the block in a sandwich or something like that. Although there's no bread in the house anymore, so you know, I'm, I'm stuck with my spinach tortillas and things like that. Um, so <laughs> it may be different. It Don't may taste mind. better. It You're may taste it well, better Jack. if it's melted. I'll concede that. I just. I just haven't found any that I'm really a fan of. Look uh, at that. Hey, it looks good. Taste is a whole different experience. Oh, my goodness. It was <laughs> delicious. And did you see my melty snacks I made? Okay. <laughs> they had melted cheese in the middle of them. Okay. All right. They were really nice. It's just like, you know... I didn't eat cheese for three years. Then I did veganery on the 1st of January last year. So I'm coming up for my one-year anniversary with a few slip ups wow. mainly in Texas, I have to say. Um, and um, I just thought, ooh, ooh, what, ooh, now I'm a vegan. What can I eat that's vegan? It was just like, oh, there's vegan butter and there's vegan this and vegan that. I was already doing the nut milk, so I'd already given up kind of dairy and I, I was just like yeah. in love with the nut milk and I was just like hallelujah cheese I've got that kind of melted you know that you know you, you make it like you know, great cheese on the top of everything like we used like I used to madly with everything um, and it brought that texture back and that kind of it's comforty yeah. to eat and it's made of because um, Valerie's never heard of it Google vegan cheeses they're made either of soya uh, with a soya base or coconut base is what I found. Um, and they're absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. You know, just like, you know, it's not exactly the same as cheddar, but it's a bit like, it's, it's quite like cheddar. The blue cheese one is so like blue cheese, I can't believe it. You know, and there's one that's very similar to Parmesan and, and on it goes. There's a feta and I cheese. Think if, if you like it, if you like it and it helps you eat whole food plant based and be vegan, then more power to you. I just, I've never, I haven't found yeah. one yet that if, I particularly like. Yeah. That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't so. have to, when are we switching? Right, Beverly, good question. We're going to go on Sunday at 8 o'clock, yeah? 2 o'clock my time, 8 o'clock London time. 8 o'clock my time, 2 o'clock Texas time. Um, and then we're going to go. On Wednesday, the following Wednesday. Same times. We? Same times. So we're going to switch then. Okay. Um, what am I seeing? Anything else? Switching our chats Wednesday and Sunday. Yeah, cutting back on meat, going back to my vegetarian way more. Good girl, Nancy. That's great to see. 
Um, blah, 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 blah. Right. Beverly learned about the sun absor absorption at a medical class she took at a university. Uh, I'm gluten free, so very little bread now. I use wraps that are gluten free when I crave sandwiches. Excellent, Nancy. I think keep away from gluten. It's all very bloaty and fills you full of wind. Um, and it's, you know, not easy to digest. Da, 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 da. What else am I seeing here? I use gluten free. Yes, my little wraps were made of kale wraps. There you go. Kale. Yeah, look, they're right here. There they were. Kale wraps. They're, these are gluten free and they're, they're made of kale. Nice green color there. And these another... ones are made of beetroot. Okay, look at the color and another on those. choice. If you look at that, that looks delicious. Another thing that you can look for out there, and I have some Asian friends, I have some Vietnamese friends. Oh, yeah. Who, who wrap, um, they do these little spring rolls. Uh, they're completely vegan, but they wrap in, um, very thin rice paper. Yes. Which would be, ex which would be a really good choice. Yeah. Um, so you could look for that. So there are lots of ways to, substitute for bread i think i think we're looking for ways to substitute gluten and pastries yeah. and things like that because when you start eating whole food plant-based you start saying okay am i just going to slice up vegetables and just eat these or am i going to like make Have something in, yeah. you know that i can grab onto and you know eat and for me it's like i like to i like to eat with my hands i like to i like my bread and and, and that kind of stuff so I'm getting away from all that. There's no bread in the house right now that I even... Well, there might be some sourdough left over from Christmas Day now that I think about it. But oh, I'm fasting today. I'm not at risk today. So, um, <laughs> But you start looking for... Okay, so for me, a snack uh, might be um, a diced... I'll dice up a uh, bell pepper and dice up a tomato. And I'll take a, uh, a spinach uh, wrap and I'll... I'll Put that in the spinach wrap, and I like to add just about a quarter or a half a tablespoon of uh, vegan A's, which is a vegan uh, mayo substitute. Okay, yeah. so it's not a whole food; it doesn't qualify, it doesn't fit, but it's my little cheat, yeah. and it makes it a lot more interesting to me. And so I put that in there, do yeah. my wrap, and then I've got this this big wrap thing that I'm eating and I'm just loving every bite of it. It's absolutely fabulous. I wouldn't have to use the vegan A's. I could use a little, um, um, not vinaigrette, but a little balsamic vinegar. I could put a little balsamic vinegar in there and maybe just a tiny pinch of a, um, mushroom, um, salt. What's the, what's the good mushroom everybody loves? Portobello. No. Mm. Oh, all this food stuff's new to me, guys. You have to give me a break here. I, for me, it was a burger. Okay, um, so <laughs> those the Chinesey ones, the expensive ones. Yeah, I know the ones you mean. The ones that look like oyster oyster mushrooms, maybe even whatever that's. they are. Yeah, I don't uh, like those at all. A, They're a bit a, a, pinch, a pinch of that now. Now it's going to bother me. A pinch of that and and roll <laughs> and eat. And it's just and it's just so yeah. good. It's so yeah. mouth watering and delicious and filling and that's important too because i get to eat i get to enjoy what i'm eating the turkey know, mushrooms no no oh, it's not those that's what i thought they were alina good ones and i don't even know how to say it i just thought you'd written shit take down and then i realized it's <laughs> shit take but i don't even know if that's pronounced <laughs> correctly <laughs> it's not oh, finian my son knows of course shiitake Truffle. <laughs> Truffle. I win. Truffle. Is it, Truffle isn't a mushroom, Jack. What is it? <laughs> um, I'll have to come oh, back mushroom. to you on that. They're little round, bobbly mushrooms. It's a fungus, but not a mushroom. I think mushrooms are fungus. All oh, right, mushrooms are splitting fungi. hairs. Okay, I'm going to shut up with that one now, Jack. Uh, it is a fungus, but it's a mushroom-like thing. A mushroom-like thing, yeah, that my pigs would literally go like cats for catnip with them. Um, and they're... The, so thing, I've got the, this... the thing about the, the vegan mayonnaise and the wraps and things that aren't strictly whole food is that some of you guys are 
transitioning and it's okay because it's not an animal product and it's not whey processed it's it's you're still cutting out those animal products um you know so i think you know i think it's okay i think it's okay i still have hummus that i buy from the shops because i live in chickpea saga today it's like Arr! i think i'm gonna buy a case of chickpeas um you know because i you know there's it's okay if you if you want if you love 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 cheese which a lot of people do take a vegan cheese and use that instead because that will help you not want the cheese if you're just completely over cheese you don't have to worry with it because there's so many things you can do with fruits and vegetables anyway um but i think it's okay because lots of people are transitioning but if you you know yeah, I think so and, too. And, and like these wraps you know the, the i didn't make this I tell you what, though, if you go and look on my channel, if you look for uh, quinoa flatbread, that is to die for. Go. It's absolutely delicious. It's got three ingredients, you know. One of them's water. <laughs> the other one's a bit of uh, nutritional yeast, which is really useful in vegan cooking. And then you've got your, your raw quinoa seeds. Whiz it all up and follow the instructions. It's so easy and it's so tasty. And it makes a fabulous thing to dip into your hummus and your dips and stuff like that. Or just to, you know, just eat with, you know, vegetables and stuff. Put your, your nut butters on instead of bread. And it's fabulous as a pizza base as well. It's just like absolutely amazing. No gluten in it. It's a super, super, super food quinoa. So that is really, really good if you're looking for something, you know, because we're used to eating bread and potatoes and pasta and stuff that in our heads we equate to it being comforty. You know, my mum used to make me chicken noodle soup that I used to call chicken noodle noodle soup when I was little. And when I was ill, she'd make me chicken noodle noodle soup. And I absolutely love it because it's in my mindset as something that's comforting. I'm being given love. I'm being given attention from my mum and all that business, you know. And the noodles, the more noodles she put in, the better I liked it. And and so we associate these kind of carb type foods as being like a, okay. like a food cuddle. So, you know. We can have I, I, alternatives. I've been, I've been corrected enough times here. Have you? Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm getting a lot of pushback on the mushroom truffle thing. Okay. Okay. I will concede that truffles are not mushrooms. Okay. I'm not, I am not a mushroom expert. <laughs> Bless I'm, you. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm perfectly okay with being wrong. <laughs> Yeah. And I'll admit it when I am, and and I'm and so um, I never I always thought truffles were a very rare mushroom. Apparently, they're not a mushroom at all. Apparently, they're just a different kind but, of fungus. But, but they, they mushrooms, grow, yeah, they grow. It, they, they grow underground. So apparently, mushrooms and truffles are both forms of fungi, but they aren't the same. So they're close. They're both fungus, right? They're both fungi. But uh, they're in different forms. So those of yeah. you who've taken time to let me know, I thank you for the correction. All right, that's that's good. Fun, they're fu what? Fun guy, not fun okay. uh, No, no, I disagree. It's fun yeah, but, the, but they, uh, they, you know, I say tomato, they say tomato. And I know. say the mayor. Oh, yeah, and, and we say pecans, and you say pecans. You're pecan. um, you know, Everybody it's it's pecan. all different. It's all different. It's that's 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 the whole different thing. Not magic them. mushrooms, Valerie. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, I I haven't. They're fungus and yummy. Uh, but vegan cheese or yogurt or whatever is all very expensive, especially when feeding a family. Yes, it They're is expensive. expensive. It is very expensive. You're quite right. Um, That's um, why if you eat those Zao. things and you want to do for a family, that should be just for a little bit for flavor probably. Is, yeah, is how just I a little sprinkling, um, yeah. stuff like that. But, you know, there's you can make them. You, you can make these. I've got, I, I must put my recipe up for like a Parmesan cheese. It's made of cashew nuts 
um, and you know some herbs and stuff, and you sprinkle it over stuff, and it's it's lovely. Um, I don't mean to know. Yeah, it, it, it is. I know it's expensive, and it's expensive because everybody's getting in on 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 the act, um, and it is. Hemp oil is delicious. Hemp flour. I don't know if I've got any hemp flour, but I bet that's delicious. Hemp is just the most amazing plant. Absolutely amazing um, plant. There's lots of different products that uh, uh, that are used for flowers. Almond flour is really good too. There are all kinds of different flour or uh, wheat flour substitutes. Yeah. If you just look, I have a really good uh, a wheat bread recipe that I substituted part of the whole wheat flour with almond flour. Yeah, and I made it. And served it to some friends, and they said it was the best tasting bread they had ever eaten, ever. And so there you go. that was probably due to the fact that it had some almond flour, and they'd never experienced it before, yeah. and it was absolutely delicious. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah I've got vitamin versus vitamin, we, we 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 get it. We're we're uh yeah, we're all on that. Uh, the other thing that I enjoy quite a bit is uh, chia seeds. I, I like to put chia in everything, just about <laughs> everything. I will put little chia seeds in everything, and I even do the chia gel. If you want to have a really interesting experience that has no taste at all, <laughs> get yourself a cup, a tumbler, and put one-third cup of chia seeds into two cups of water, Stir for a few for about a moment. Stir for ten seconds. Walk away and come back in twenty minutes, and you will have this absolutely crazy thick gel product that yeah. you can drink down. It feels like eggs going down, like a raw and egg. And you can it's use thick. it in baking. Huh? As you, it, it, a chia seed is another way of making a vegan egg. So yeah, one tablespoon right. of chia to yeah. two tablespoons of water is equivalent to one egg. So if you're making a vegan cake, for example, you and you need two eggs, you'd use two tablespoons. So you're making like a giant omelet, and, and it is the same texture, doesn't it? Right. As, as, it's as a egg. very it, – it is. It's, it's a, a – yes, I, I make my own bread. I have my own bread recipe. I can. I, I bought some special um, Pyrex type things to make, and uh, a little spritz of uh, vegetable on it, and and you put it in there, and you bake it. I got, and and I stopped making the bread when we got into the Dave's Killer Bread because yeah. that was easier. Right. Uh, and so I started eating the Dave's Killer Bread and loving it, and now I've kind of started cutting back because I felt like it was contributing to. You know, me wanting to get heavy again. Yeah. And so now that that's gone, I'm back to doing what I was doing originally, which is the, the fresh fruits and vegetables and, and really get into that 80% fruits and vegetables at, at the top part of the pyramid, yeah. so to speak. And, and, um, it's, it's, I think it's better for me. Uh, my weight's still right in that 197, 198. Really? Area. Even with cutting out the bread and the soda? Even with cutting out the bread. It really hasn't made that big a difference. I thought it would, but it hasn't. Um, so. Well, maybe it will. Maybe it will. I, I'm I literally I'm, still stuck at the same weight for the like yeah. about three or four weeks. Um, right. but I'm not fussed because I feel great. And that's fine. And, and yeah. for me, though, I do when I do eat, I like to eat, and so I eat, and I put a lot in. And so for me, the five two seems to work very well for me to to maintain that weight and maintaining. Yeah. I wanted to really wanted to maintain under two hundred. I've been able to do that. Uh, so you know, again, making these lifestyle changes to be as healthy as I want to be, and part of that for me is is. I have a weight goal as well, yeah. Um, but I couldn't yeah, have gotten too. here doing these other things. If, if if I'd gone keto, I would have never lost the weight. I would have lost a few pounds here and there, and it would have come right back on. I'd have done it again. I'd been frustrated at myself. Yeah. I'd have been angry, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, Sue Guest schooled me on bread and cola. Well, she got me because of all the artificial ingredients in the Coke Zero, and I knew the Coke Zero wasn't healthy. But it was sort of this this last comfort thing that I was holding on to, uh, and so I dumped it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can be Thank taught, you. Um, you, and I, I can follow that's instructions. That's really, really good. Uh, my brain is plastic enough where it can still change, right? <laughs> 
It's, that's, that's, that's neuroplasticity, right? The ability to, to learn things when we're older. We can still make these changes despite being in our sixth decade of life. Right? <gasps> when you're in your 50s, when you're in your 50s, you're in your sixth oh, decade. Oh, no. That sounds awful. That, that's I mental. Know, that's a complete true. mind, so mind nightmare. You're in your sixth decade, Sue. Oh, no. That, so that's, am I. Well, I'd say life doesn't start till you get to the sixth decade then. <laughs> uh, right, Core uh, is saying that her friend was a professional vegan baker. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Come on them for some recipes, Core, and send them to me, and I will try them out. And I'm waiting on, I have got a bread recipe from Alicia, the, the amazing um, raw vegan chef we had on as a guest. But she's asked me not to share it because she's doing a bit of perfecting. So uh, and we're having Christmas in the middle of it. So I'm sure I will get that. Um, so uh, Valerie's talking about you need to come and coach me. Um, that is exactly what we're doing here. We're, you know, we're helping each other here and we're sharing our, our, our good results and That's ideas right. and stuff. Exactly. Um, exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. And if I'm going to share information that I have to help you and I'm asking you to make a change and you tell me something that I should do to make a change, if I'm not willing to do that, then I'm a hypocrite. So I'm willing to make the changes too. I'm willing to still make changes if it's the right thing. If it's healthy, I'm willing to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, we're all... We're, we're all baby vegan. Well, actually, one of, one of, one of my lovelies has been a vegan for four years. Um, but, uh, we're all quite new. You know, I'm going to be coming up on my year anniversary on the 31st of December. It will have been a whole year with, as I said, a few slip ups here and there and, 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 and definitely lots of slip, slip ups in Texas. When we come and see you this year, there's going to be no, no, no meat eating going on because I have tried. <laughs> I have tasted. I can put that in my. I've done that little kit bag, which is my little FOMO it. queen, little demon in my little gremlin we'll in my head. To, oh, uh, we'll I'll have to talk everything. to DW into making that Wellington again because it was really extraordinary. Wow, wow, that that would be fantastic. That would be. Well, but by the well, time Christy, I get out there, Abby will be a full on vegan as well, won't she? Because she's she is really she's, working hard at it. Chrissy, yeah. I take it in in the in the. You, I got your message. You said a doctor that isn't a know it all. That's why I love it. Well, you're a sweetheart. I'm not a know it all, um, and I'm glad to share what I do know. And I do know that I'm going to keep learning new things probably until the day I die, and I hope so. And I take I, I love the ribbing and the jibbing and the and the and the fun stuff that we do that makes us all you know who we are and it makes it enjoyable and interesting. And uh, I'm I'm never offended and, and no need to. Uh, no need to worry about that. Five months for you since last Saturday. Well, that's fantastic. That's Just amazing. Fantastic. Um, right, Jill and Kent, she asks, does mood suffer at first when changing diet? I'm assuming it corrects when the body detoxes. I think you've kind of answered your own question there. If you're a big coffee drinker and you're drinking all those lattes at Starbucks and stuff like that and you... You know, you can get a load of headaches for that. Do you think mood changes particularly, Jack? I think that if you are addicted to caffeine and you are addicted to cheap calories such as lattes, you are going to have to go through an adjustment. You're going yeah. to have to go through withdrawal from that. You will withdraw from that. Yeah. You are I mean if if people if people are people who are are eating the regular western diet with their lattes and their cheeseburgers. When you go to a whole food plant-based diet, you are going to go through a withdrawal period just like any other addiction because you are losing something you're addicted to. Your body's going to want it and your body's going to pout and it's going to make you feel rotten and you're going to think you made a dumb, dumb decision yeah. until it goes away, until the until you start feeling better. And usually that's just a few days. And really, if you, if you do it, quote-unquote, you know, cold squash – I'm not going to say cold turkey. If you go cold squash on this, right, then you're going to get... <laughs> I need to spat my Don't drink out of my computer then. Cold I can't squash. say cold turkey here for crying out loud. <laughs> There's so cold... many phrases, aren't there, that are meat related. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. It, you, you get there faster, but it's a, it's a, it's a rougher ride, okay? Yes. Yes, <laughs> if you go right. slower, 
it takes a lot longer. The ride might be smoother, but it's. I think that I think the easy for me the transition was just like immediate. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm doing this. Yeah. And uh, the, the energy, the increase in energy, energy you, you feel is just caffeine. If you give up caffeine immediately, you're going to feel terrible. Mm. I still drink caffeine. I still have my black coffee. I mean, I have. I don't see any reason not to enjoy my black coffee. Uh, so I'm still. In fact, there's a lot of evidence out there that coffee is actually good for you in a lot of ways. So. As far as I'm concerned, coffee is a whole a plant based whole food. I have no problem with it. <laughs> Just like tea, I have no problem with with tea. Yeah, no, I mean it, that's fine. I think that's fine. I think if you drink loads and loads of coffee, then you've got way too much caffeine. I and mean, if you drink instant coffee, which I know you don't, instant coffee's got chemical caffeine in it, and the body doesn't really know how to process artificial caffeine. Much like it doesn't really know how to process artificial sugar and messed around with calorie processed numpty food so i think some people just like drinking you know oh, wow, coffee crazy. every half an hour aren't they and they're in a the right old state and when they come chrissy off the coffee says, it's very bad chrissy says that she was drinking eight dr peppers a day which is a real popular local drink here right it's it's our coke yeah. right and she stopped cold squash Cold squash. <laughs> Excellent. I think the other thing is when you change to plant based whole food, your body knows what to do with it. You might have some side effects initially, but you're having going to have so much more energy. And the other thing that's going to happen is your because of all the fiber, the natural fiber like prebiotics going through your gut, cleansing your gut, you're going to start producing more dopamine. Yeah, and more um, serotonin, and 95% of your serotonin is made in your gut. So that's your natural happy drug. So you're going to start feeling, A, more energy, and then, B, you've got happy drug dripping into your head. You're going to be skippity doo down the road. You know, you're just going to be feeling so great, and then your body is going to detox, and you're going to feel better and better and better, and more and more and more energy. And the side effect of all that extra health that you're going to feel is that if you've got weight to lose, you're going to start losing it because you're, fi you're, you're seen, being more healthy. I've seen people who have had inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome, so both IBD and IBS, both peoples significantly reduced their symptoms mm. when they adopted a whole food yeah. plant-based diet. In other words, Crohn's sufferers, ulcerative colitis sufferers, IBSD and IBSC, so constipation prone, irritable bowel syndrome or diarrhea prone, irritable bowel syndrome, all of these conditions seem to be positively influenced by a whole food plant-based diet and not a little bit, a lot, a mm. lot. Beverly, I struggled with my soda for a long time. I got shamed out of it. It'll happen to you. Hang around here for a while. Admit that you're drinking sodas and you're going to get busted like <laughs> I did. And if I don't get off of this now and go in and spend some time with the family, the DW is going to come out here with a rolling pin and I'm really going to get busted because I'm over time. Yes, I, I am all. too. I Wink, go. Wink's in bed with his hands over his ears because, of course, I've got such a loud voice. I'm bellowing at the top of it all the time. <laughs> Right, um, right. What's your channel again? It's it's John Gilmore MD vignettes, isn't it? Right, John Gilmore MD vignettes. Okay, yeah. so John Gilmore MD hyphen vignettes. But if you type John Gilmore in, you'll see one that's just Doctor John Gilmore, isn't it? One of them. That's his big main one, and then the one that he's on tonight is vignettes. It's, that's for Valerie. Okay, where else can we get sound medical advice? doctor advice and not have to spend a fortune on it ada exactly where else this is the place so do pass the word around hi louise sweetheart we're about to finish so yeah you can get your advice here i, I think I, I was like i won't go on again because because poor old jack will go bright red again but um just literally the knowledge that um dr gilmore has is absolutely incredible and we've both had a very similar physical experience going plant-based. Um, and it is 
both of our passions to help people get healthier, look, move and feel better. That's literally what I want to do with the rest of my life. And, and uh, you know, it starts with mindset and, and what you put in your mouth. That's where, you know, let food be your medicine because How it true. is, it is the, our medicine, you know. You know, look at all the wildebeest. They're just eating food that they're supposed to eat. They're all healthy unless they get eaten by a lion. You know, look at, look at, look at the birds flying around in the sky. They're all healthy. They're not dropping in at McDonald's, you know. They're eating what they're supposed to eat. Every creature on the planet is eating what they're supposed to eat and they're all just fine. And we need to get back to that and then we'll all just be fine. And that's kind of, that's what we're here for. So we will see you again on Sunday. Sunday. Two o'clock Texas, Texas, eight Texas eight o'clock time, London. Eight o'clock London time. And we will go on and we'll do videos on both of our channels to let you all know. Um, lots of love to you. Thank you for your questions. Thanks for the new, the new guys who have been on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, yes. and I will put some, I will, I will, as I said, put the benefits of fasting up on one of these videos, uh, in the, um, description so that you can see those, but it's been, it's been great. Thanks for all your questions, Valerie, because it's given us, um, some good chat about type two diabetes and, and, you know, it's fantastic. Thanks, Ms. Al, for that. We love doing what we do. Um, and uh, thank you very much for, for joining us tonight in your holiday period. All right. Good night, all. Over and out. Over and out. This Steve. is Houston. We're yeah. out. Over and out in Norfolk. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night.